Hey everybody, this is Brad from Johnson Small Engines. Just want to show you how to start an Elite Series Briggs & Stratton generator. This is a 10,000 watt generator, 8,000 running watts. I don't know a whole bunch about the electrical side of them, but I am good with starting them and how to run them. So I just want to make sure I show everybody on how I operate to help you guys out there. All right, first thing you want to do is check the oil and that's down here. And when I check the oil on these on level ground, you just pull the dipstick out. Now the dipstick bar graph goes all the way up here. All right, so basically you're gonna have the oil level almost to the end of the threads, almost coming out. Just make sure one, I mean, I basically get it right up to the edge of the threads and you're good. But you gotta make sure you're on very level ground when you do that and make sure it's topped off. All, pretty much all, I wouldn't say everybody, but all generators should have a low oil shutdown. So if you run these not level, it sometimes can trick itself to think that it's out of oil and it'll shut down or it won't start up. So make sure you run them on level ground. Make sure you check the oil. The fuel tank's up here and the gas cap is right here. I would say um, high test fuel. I know in this area our fuel isn't the greatest. We always use high test. Use fuel stabilizer. Fill it all the way up and uh, your oil's checked now. We're gonna come to some of the knobs here. Now this is an electric start. So we have an ignition switch here. And that's a key start ignition switch. You have your hour meter, which is pretty nice to have, so you can check hours when you wanna, wanna change your oil and stuff like that. You, this does have a battery. Battery's down here. Okay, now this is just a, an, an inside battery here. This will come out if you unbolt these, if you need to replace it. They do have a port here for a battery charger. It says right here, battery float charger. Should come with the generator, I, th I think, but I'm not 100% sure. But if you don't, you just go on a Briggs & Stratton's website, see if you can order one up. But that, if you keep one plugged in, the battery will last a lot longer. And I know a lot of people don't use the generators a lot, so it's important that your battery's there. This is a choke here. So when you start it, you're gonna pull the choke out. Okay, you're gonna turn the key to crank, and it's gonna fire right up. Now, that's pretty much it for starting it. Now, the circuit breaker here on and off, I've had mixed feelings as far as people tell me, okay, well, have it off when you start the machine and turn it on because what that does is that turns on your power and it's a circuit breaker for your, your power. Like I said, I don't get into all the power stuff. I do know that this needs to be on when you're generating electricity, uh, but as far as starting it, um, this is pretty much straightforward. I do want to show you, though, around the front of the, the engine here, okay, there is a fuel on and off shutoff. Okay, it's a little confusing by this. A lot of people are like, okay, well, what does that mean? All right, well, the off is means that when you turn this knob this way, which is clockwise, it's gonna be off, and that's, that's off right now. So on, you're gonna turn it counterclockwise. So when it's straight up and down, that's on. You wanna make sure that this fuel valve is on before you crank up the motor. And also over here, this motor must be used on a lot of different applications because it has a choke lever and the choke on and off here, which you are not going to just go ahead and if you put a piece of tape over that or cover it up, you do not need this lever at all because this lever is connected to a cable, which in turn is connected to the choke around here. Okay, so now we have the fuel on. We did check the gas. We're going to go ahead and fire this thing up. So choke out. I'm going to crank it up. Now this thing's going to fire up and run. It's going to be pretty loud, and then I'm just going to turn it off. Okay, the reason why I left this thing run is because it was actually hunting up and down. Now, the longer this will run, I was hoping it was going to stop surging. Uh, it does take a little bit of time for this to actually, and this is just pertaining to this machine. These carburetors are tight tolerances and you need to let them warm up sometimes. You do not want a generator to surge when you're using it because you'll get a surge coming out of the generator that powers up your house. So you got to make sure that these are running smooth. We have a lot of issues with the generators coming in here because they don't run or they surge or they hunt up and down. And it's because we don't use them a lot in this area and we have to rebuild the carburetors or replace them. So keep that in mind. If you if it does not smooth out after probably five or ten minutes of running, um, it shouldn't even be ten minutes. It should only take 
you know, up to five minutes maybe to, to get the carburetor warmed up so it smooths out. You can compensate by pulling the choke out a little bit while, you know, while it warms up, but ultimately um, you pull it out a little bit, you know, if, it's, if it keeps hunting and surging, but ultimately the choke should be in when the machine is operating correctly and it should be smooth. So keep that in mind. I hope this uh, helped a lot of people as far as starting a machine up. If you have any comments, just feel free to leave one below. I appreciate everybody watching my videos. Thanks for watching and please subscribe.